Hi guys, so today I'm going to try and see if I can hydro dip miniatures to give them that camouflage look. And I have the perfect miniature in mind, so I'm going to head over to my mini factory and those lovely people print minis. They've actually sponsored this video, so cheers to them guys. And as you can see, they do a whole variety of, well, miniatures, terrain, vehicles. And as you can see everything on the screen now, this is what they uh, produced in just one month. If you sign up to be a patron, this is the kind of thing, well, you'd expect to see each and every month, and all their stuff is kind of grimdark themed, which is just awesome. Or you can sign up to their email list and get 35% off everything, and you get a free miniature every month, which is pretty cool too. I will be uh, hydro dipping a miniature later on in the video, but the main thing I would want to try first of all is a, well, it's a vehicle. I'm going to say, I'll have a go for the camouflage look, so the vehicle I'm going for is this sump boat um, and the main reason for that is obviously you want to do the vehicle but I've also got a diorama in mind for this so keep an eye out for that uh, probably next week guys so as always I'm going to print these things out on my GK2 and uh, take them into the slicer software and the great thing here is obviously I can adjust the size so I've reduced mine down by 50% and um, main reason for this if I didn't when I do the diorama it probably wouldn't fit on my desk so yeah as always guys don't forget I'm just a guy sitting at a desk in his living room I don't have a fancy studio or workshop or even a garage or spare room. I literally am sitting at a desk in a living room. So yeah, size of things does kind of require me to uh, yeah make adjustments here and there. So yeah, obviously as I reduce these down, the uh, the supports obviously everything's gone down by 50%, and these things just peel off. Um, yeah, no effort whatsoever. Didn't even have to put them in warm water. So all the bits came out lovely, and the great thing with everything here is it's all hollowed. So as well as everything being 3D supported really, really well, everything's hollowed, so they try and minimise the amount of resin you need to, well, to produce their sort of awesome work. So yeah, it's simply a case of a bit of gluing here and there. Um, there's no instructions for this one, I don't think, but then again, you don't really need instructions. Some of their larger sort of vehicles, um, yeah, they have really in-depth instructions, which is pretty cool, because some of their vehicles do have a lot of, well, a lot of components to them. So it didn't take long to put this together and I've also stuck it on one of my little painting handles there, you can see that just about underneath. And this is obviously going to make it easier for me to, well, paint it, but also dip it. Um, I say hydro dipping, something I've never done before, uh, but yeah, I like to try out new things. So normally I prime in black, but this time I'm going to prime in white, and as always the colour forge. I love these ones because, well, they do what they say on the tins. The paint comes out beautifully and it is a nice matte colour. So yeah, it's primed in white and it's ready for dipping. Um, so I need to get, obviously, well, the dipping stuff ready. So I did have a little go at trying to do uh, the spray cans on water, but the ones I've got must be, um, well, water-based because that didn't work at all. Unfortunately, I didn't film it because I had to do it outside in a big bucket. So I then went on Amazon and bought these, yeah, easy marble, um, well, dipping inks. So they do what they sell on the tin and these should work perfectly. I will leave links down below, guys, as always, to everything I use. So yeah, container, I'd rather have a big bucket <laughs> Or I've got this empty, uh, well, empty surf uh, washing sort of doobie. What's it? Again, yeah, lack of room. I needed something small that could fit on my desk. So this is what I've gone for. And as I'm going for camouflage, I'm kind of looking for this sort of green and black, well, an army kind of look. So yeah, these are as simple as just dropping them in. Um, I'm using cold water because that's what it says to use on these. Even though when I looked online for other videos, most of them seem to say use warm water. Um, but say these uh, these inks said use cold, so that's what I'm using. So yeah, it's a case of just dropping them in, and then I'm using a little uh, toothpick here to swirl in the patterns. Um, yeah, it wasn't too. Again, I'm just the first time I'm doing this, so I'm just having a bit of a play. Obviously, this doesn't quite look like the sort of army camouflage, but we'll get to that later on. And then yeah, before I dip my main thing in, I'm gonna do a few little testers, a few little bases here, just to see well how it comes out. As I say, I've never done this before. I know this technique isn't new, and guys, a lot of stuff you'll see on my channel, it isn't new. If ever I say it's new to me, that's because, well, it is new to me. Um, but yeah, it, this, it's a lot of fun. Um, it came out a lot easier than I thought, because uh, I did think I was going to have problems, say, with the cold water, when especially with everything else I've seen says use warm. But um, yeah, everything came out really well with these dipping inks. Uh, there are a few little areas where, obviously, I haven't mixed the paint in, so you are going to see a little bit of the white from underneath. And then when you're done, it's simply a case of putting something in. I'm using an old brush here. And then just sort of picking up, scooping up, dragging up. Almost like trying to do candy floss. But uh, yeah, get rid of the uh, the excess sort of paint or ink that's floating around. Just so you can start afresh and do the next one. 
So my little testers came out fine, so yeah, let's go and <laughs> let's try and do the big boat. Um, so the boat just fits in this container. Uh, I may need to try and get a bigger container because I do like the idea of, uh, well, doing some more of this. I know my kids want me to do their Xbox controllers, so I'm going to need something a bit bigger to, uh, yeah, to mess about with and do those. So again, yeah, mixing it around. Um, when I come to do the final, final one, because I thought this was going to be the final one, but well, you'll see in a minute where I didn't exactly make a mistake, but um, yeah, there's areas I thought I could improve on. So it's just a case of slowly lowering, obviously, whatever item it is you want to hydro dip into the water and obviously all those inks. Give it a little shake, pull it up, and voila, this is what we're left with. And yeah, I'll have to admit, it's come out pretty cool. Um, but as you can see, there are quite a few white areas here and there. Um, so what I thought was if I get the thing and then, well, re-dip it. So that's what, exactly what I've done. Um, again, a lot of these things, it is a sort of trial and error, learning mistakes. And obviously the mistake here is when you re-dip it, you're going to get all the black bits um, going over more bits. And obviously as the black is a lot darker than the green, it does end up looking, well, rather dark. But hey ho, I thought I would go anyway. Um, I say this thing, yeah, there's white bits everywhere. So let's re-dip twice. Um, but say, as you saw on the little base, yeah, I kind of, well, didn't even think about it at the time. But yeah, the black areas are just going to have more black areas. And the black areas are obviously going to go over the greener areas. And then it starts to get a bit darker and darker. Uh, but as you can see, it's got darker, but it's still, <laughs> still those white areas in the hard to sort of reach areas. So, yeah, had a little change of plan. So, although I'm pleased with how some of the bases come out, they are pretty cool. And I say for the first time, um, yeah, other than the fact that there's lots of these white areas, I do love how it looks because it is such a nice, simple, quick, and easy way of definitely doing, say, sort of camouflage sort of look. Then I had the cunning plan: why don't I redo it again? But this time, with the uh, the objects I'm going to dip, I'll uh, prime them in black. Um, yeah, so guys, this is where sometimes our brains don't quite communicate because obviously I've just realised that doing or dipping them twice, you get more black on them and it's very difficult to see. Uh, so yeah, why I thought priming something in black and then doing this would be a good idea, I'm not too sure. So you can see the green I put in, the other colour is a clear colour. Um, but yeah, obviously because the thing's black, um, yeah, you, well, so you can't really see it at all on the screen. You can just about see there is green on this uh, in real life. Um, yeah, so this is definitely where we do, do learn by our own sort of errors, trialling and all the rest of it. So I, I had already primed the ship in black to do that. But obviously after doing my little tester, it's like, well, there's no point because this thing's just kind of going to come out black, black. So yeah, you do need to prime these in white. So um, yeah, take, I don't know, three or four, get a black ship that's been primed so many times and let's reprime it white. So this bad boy now has quite a few layers on it, uh, but luckily because it is a ship, it doesn't matter so much. Um, yeah, so again, say take number four, but so I was having fun just doing this dipping thing because it is fun, easy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to dip it again, but I'm going to, obviously I realise now, or I know now, I am going to get some white areas. So it is a case of rather living with the white areas, or possibly going in afterwards and painting those sort of white areas black. Um, but this one simply came out with even more white areas. So I then kind of embraced what had happened and thought, yeah, I'm going to keep it with this. This boat is basically green, black, and bits of white. Um, but yeah, then I got mad and thought I'd have a little bit of a play with some other colours. So I got a Space Marine. Although, again, this Space Marine was actually pre-painted, and then I primed him in white. So he's got quite a few layers on him already as well. Um, so this is just more for practice, for fun, just to see, well, how they come out and see how the colours look. So this little um, set that I got, you only get the six colours. Well, I say six colours. One of those colours is the clear one. And yeah, I think this is where I was just having fun and just loving the fact of how easy this is to do. And I thought something that would look good is, yeah, bases, if you want to get sort of the marble look. Um, as I say, this is quite an easy process to do. So rather than sort of painstakingly try and paint marble, um, yeah, you can do it very simply with this. Obviously, again, trial and error and getting better at sort of moving the paints around. So my boat, um, yeah, I'm happy with how it is. I'm now going to get it ready for, well, say the diorama that I'm going to be working on next week. Keep an eye out for that, guys, because I'm going to be using some two-part resin um, and seeing what fun and mess I can get with that. So, yeah, I want this boat to obviously look a bit more distressed, worn, weathered. Usual sort of thing here. Get the dirty down rust, paint it on neat, 
and then dip my brush in some water just to sort of dilute certain areas and to help the, uh, the dirty round rust drip down whatever is you're painting. So yeah, nice simple technique, just put this all over, leave it for a good, well I normally do mine for a good hour or so, and then it certainly looks like it's a, a bus, a bus? A boat that's been on the seas for many a year, and yeah, seen better days. And then to finish it off, just get some good old transfers. Um, yeah, love using these things, nice and simple, easy to do, uh, and just sort of add something to it, because obviously for me to try and paint numbers like this, yeah, I wouldn't even bother trying. And then just to make the numbers look sort of weathered like everything else, a bit of the old wash here and there. And yeah, that's the job done for that. And there's just one last thing I need to do to this to obviously help bring it back to looking like it is a metal ship and not just something that's, uh, well, a bit of plastic that's painted. So yeah, get the boat and dry brush some silver. Uh, again, a very simple technique. I do love dry brushing. I keep saying it, but yeah, dry brushing, one of those simple little things to do, but it really can change the appearance of something. Um, yeah, quite rotten. And in this case, obviously hitting all the edges, it just reveals a little bit of what could have been underneath all this paint, and that's the metal. So yeah, nice simple thing, get this boat back to looking like a metal boat rather than a, a toy plastic thing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next week and say trying out this two-part resin. I have tried out before, uh, never really had much of a success, but I've got a new resin this time, so I'm hoping that's, um, that's going to do the trick. Let me know in the comments guys if you hydro dip anything to do with your miniatures, whether it's the bases or figures or say even the, uh, the vehicles and terrain. I think it can certainly be done, a, uh, done in a fun way like this to give some great sort of results. And also let me know below if there's anything you think I should try. I say I really want to try out, well, as many different sort of variations of painting techniques, building techniques or just general making techniques as yeah this hobby is all about sharing having fun and well trying out new things <laughs> whether they work or not is a different thing but yeah it's always fun to try out new stuff and as i say i think this is quite cool the way it's come out um it is one of those things where i think you would get better knowing how the patterns come out to how you obviously mix them up in the uh, in the water but for me yeah i was happy with this and as i say the kids definitely want me to do their xbox controllers so i'll be doing that next as always, a big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons and my monthly sponsors for helping keep the channel going, keep me in mince pies, and yeah, keep me being a big kid and having loads of fun. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave comments down below, share and subscribe if you can. You guys all take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.